On the Fiat, it starts at £64,903. The two grey options and white are really your only choices. So the standard engine is the Multijet 3, now a 2.2 litre unit um, with 140 bhp. If you want to go up to the 180 bhp engine, it'll cost you about another three grand. So the bit that makes the Pimento XL stand out from other Mervis and a lot of other camper vans, well, look at it, you've got massive externally accessed storage. You've got a little hatch here into the washroom so you can access some of the storage. People often ask me in this job, what would you buy? This would definitely be on the shortlist. Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan and today I'm at the Caravan and Motorhome Club Sirencester site with this, the Mervi Pimento XL SB, which is a new version of a very well-proven layout. Mervi have been making camper vans in Devon since 1980 and most of them with this sort of side settee lounge, which is so proven, so well-loved and has won so many awards. Probably Mervi has won more awards than any other camper van manufacturer and perhaps we'll see why a bit later on. But the specifics of this new Pimento XL SB, well Pimento was developed to be a shorter five and a half metre version of the Morello but this XL version is a six metre van. So why is that? Because going to the Pimento XL rather than the Morello gives you the same slightly smaller lounge area as the Pimento, but more storage, an externally accessed storage area at the back, which we'll see very shortly. Also get an extended kitchen in this Pimento XL compared with a standard Pimento. And then the SB bit, well, that quite simply stands for single beds because the standard Pimento comes with a double bed made from that side facing settee in the lounge. So a very proven design, but updated with some new options, really. Let's take a closer look at what you get with this new camper van. Now, there are absolutely no prizes for spotting that this is based on a Fiat Ducato, but you can also have your Pimento XL or Pimento XL SB on a Ford Transit. Similar sort of length. On the Fiat, it starts at £64,903. This one's got a few options which we'll go through as we go through the van, including the Expedition Grey paint, which is uh, £720. Unfortunately, you can no longer get Fiat's in metallic, so the two grey options and white are really your only choices. Here you've got just the standard black bumper. If you want to upgrade that, it's £408. And if you want alloy wheels rather than the steel wheels with wheel trims that you've got on this particular model, that's another £672, I think. Anyway, this one isn't particularly loaded up with options. You can go a lot further if you want to because every Mervy is built to order. They don't have stock, they don't have dealers, they sell direct from the factory in Devon, and each one is built to the customer spec. Mervy says they tend to either build them pretty much like this with just a few key options, things like cab air conditioning, or will really go to town and they want the 180 horsepower engine, automatic gearbox, and all the toys. That is up to you. Now, of course, this is the latest Series 8 Fiat Ducato, so the standard engine is the Multijet 3, now a 2.2 litre unit um, with 140 bhp. If you want to go up to the 180 bhp engine, it'll cost you about another three grand. Standard, of course, are these nice framed, semi, well, pretty much flush fitting windows with a proper, as I say, proper frame all, around, all the way around the outside. A lot better than some of the rather caravan style windows that you see on a lot of camper vans. Here you've got your mains hookup and your external shower point. External shower point is a 180 pound option. Round the back then you've got your reversing camera that's a 408 pound option and I'll show you the storage in just a minute. Up on the roof, you've got a 175 watt solar panel, and that's a 660 pound option. 
but as standard equipment you do get 150 amp hour lithium leisure batteries so you're well set up with this particular example for a bit of off-grid camping. Back here is your fresh water filler and the water tank is inboard, so great for a bit of winter camping too. 72 litres that holds and your waste tank that's under slung and that's 45 litres. Back here you've got an external barbecue point or external gas point, that's a 180 pound option but as standard you do get a 25 litre underslung gas tank which okay um, gas refills are becoming slightly more difficult in some areas but it is cheaper and more convenient when you're on the continent. Then moving forward of course you've got your big sliding door which is a big part of the appeal of this layout because you sit on the sofa looking out at the outside world on a beautiful day like today. And at the sliding door you've got a nice wide electric step with a switch just inside the door. If you forget to put it in when you drive off, there's a buzzer to remind you, but it doesn't go in automatically. But the switch is only just there, so as long as you've got a passenger, you don't even have to get out of the passenger seat. The LED strip over the sliding door, um, that's another option, but it's not an expensive one. So, that's the outside. Let's take a look at what makes the XL version such an interesting option in the Mervy range the external storage at the back. So the bit that makes the Pimento XL stand out from other Mervies and a lot of other camper vans. Well, look at it, you've got massive externally accessed storage from opening this door, which of course has no window, so if you've got valuable stuff in here, prying eyes aren't aware. Dimensions, well, it's about 1.84 metres high, so six foot and you can see I could stand in here. These shelves are fully adjustable and removable so if you've got tall stuff that you want to store just take the shelves out but they're really sturdy. If you want heavy heavy-ish stuff on them you've got hanging rail if you wanted to hang wetsuits say in here or wet coats if you need more hanging space than you've got inside the van and I've got a really big comfy outdoor chair on that top shelf and that's well, it's not even taking hardly any space at all. You could have the biggest outdoor furniture, barbecues and so on. You've got a little hatch here into the washroom so you can access some of the storage or at least the hanging rail and this top shelf from inside the van. The depth here is about 640 mil and then width above the wheel arch in this corner is about 890 mil. So it's a really really useful space for a van that doesn't have a fixed bed and gives you that lovely big lounge to have all that storage is fantastic. But if you're wondering, wondering about the other door, well that gives you access to the back of the fridge if you need any maintenance, you've got your water pump there and this is your fresh water tank. So the storage at the back is why you choose a Pimento XL. This is why you choose a Merve. You've got this super comfortable sofa looking out through the big sliding door on a great day like today. Even when the weather's not so great and you've got the door shut, this is a comfortable, relaxing space with lots of room. You've got the twin cab seats which both swivel around easily and little details like the flap. So if you sit in the passenger seat, which looks high, doesn't it, compared with the floor, well, you've got this little flap so your feet aren't dangling in mid-air. How good is that for a bit of detailing? Of course, if you sit on this side, it's not an issue. Here, you can enjoy the outside view as well. And you've got room on the sofa to put your feet up as well. Now, this is an option. You can have a bigger wardrobe that comes right out. I like this version, which it just feels more spacious with the the reduced depth wardrobe and then you can sit here with your feet up as well which I really rather like but yeah what a brilliant lounge so what else can I tell you about the interior of this Mervy well for a start don't fret about the color scheme if you don't like it and this wouldn't be my choice well 
the company says it offers an almost limitless range of upholsteries, different fabrics, different styles, different textures, whatever you want, you should be able to find it. If you want leather for the cab seats, full leather, that's a £600 option, and you can have part leather for the sofa, for that's another £600. And there's no truth in the rumour that these scatter cushions were chosen to match my favourite white stuff jumper. No truth in that at all too hot for me to wear the jumper so I thought I'd bring it along and match the colour scheme but no that's not going to happen today it's 22 degrees out there so enjoying this space um, you can choose the colours of the cabinets too these locker doors and obviously you've got a bit of a blue or sort of aquamarine colour scheme theme going on in this van but you can have all sorts of different colours um, for the locker doors I'd choose something a bit more bit more plain I think and then on the uh, floor you can have vinyl or carpet the worktops there's a range of, of different worktop styles as well although I rather like this sort of grey wood in this one anyway lots and lots of choice because Mervy's are bespoke build as I said up in the roof um, you've got this nice vinyl finish for the uh, for the walls for the ceiling or certainly at the ceiling at the front of the vehicle here, it goes to a white finish in the kitchen area. Top hinged uh, framed windows, of course, as I mentioned earlier, and you've got this big wind-up hecky sunroof over the lounge, the wind-up crank style, not the cheaper push-up one that most campervan companies seem to fit. Lighting, there's plenty of that too. You've got these LED strips or double strips, um, under the top lockers, in the kitchen, in the ceiling, plenty of those. And then you've got these down lighters as well with just the, the touch to operate there in the cab ceiling and over the door as well. And then you've got reading lights here in the cab and just at the end of the sofa there. So there's no shortage of lighting throughout the vehicle. You can have a fly screen on the sliding door, that's an option. And of course awnings are, are an optional as well. Uh, that might be rather nice for a hot day like today and have the awning out but uh, yeah plenty of choice plenty of uh, options to choose from in this living area and another option you've got although it actually comes as standard is you've got the option of two different tables both included in the standard spec both table legs store clipped into place in the wardrobe and then when you want to use the smaller coffee table you just undo this bracket at the front a little and then tighten it up again. Both table tops store on this over cab shelf. Mervy retains the Fiat shelf that we've seen for so long but actually is disappearing from a lot of campers as they go to full height walkthroughs and over cab sunroofs but not in the Mervy. you've still got that shelf. Useful space for keeping both your table tops and more things besides but mainly your tables. Now this is a neat little coffee table, ideal for the two cab seats. Breakfast I thought was great using this. Um, you don't need any more and it doesn't clutter up the living space. So that's a good start. If you want a bigger dining table, actually is a freestanding one using this tripod base. Leg again from the wardrobe and then good size dining surface and actually surprisingly stable and of course you can use it inside and outside the vehicle so really nice to have the choice of tables other features i perhaps should have mentioned is that you've got rear speakers these nice kenwood speakers in the back of the van as well now i touched on the uh, wardrobe earlier and the fact that this is the reduced depth version full version comes out to the same level as the washroom but having that gives you more space and you've still got room for probably at least half a dozen garments, shirts, trousers, um, jackets to hang in there. And if you need more hanging space than that, of course, you can use the garage area at the back too, which is accessible through the washroom. Now, if I take my shirts and so on out of there, you can see that also included as part of the Mervy spec, you get a first aid kit, spare bulbs for your vehicle, and your RCD unit is, is in there as well, and your fire blanket. Alongside the wardrobe, you've got your controls for your heating um, and 
for the underslung gas tank as well. The heater itself or the boiler, um, it's a Webasto unit fired off diesel, five kilowatt heating off diesel or two kilowatt off mains electrics. And that boiler is under this end part of the sofa here. On the side of the wardrobe here, you've also got some controls. You've got your main light switch, water pump switch and auxiliary, and you've got your fresh water level gauge on there as well and a warning when your waste tank is full. I should also mention this Victron energy display which tells you how much power you're either taking out of the batteries and remember it's 150 amp hour lithium battery that you've got in this vehicle as standard. It tells you whether you're taking more power than you're gaining from the solar panel. At the moment we're hardly using anything. Another star feature of this Mervy is the kitchen area. You've got plenty of worktop even before you deploy this extra flap at the end. And then really it puts most coach builds to shame. You get a three burner hob as standard um, and then you get a choice of kitchen fittings depending what your priorities are. Now in this van, you've got a 115 litre isotherm compressor type fridge. If you prefer a three-way type fridge, you can have a 93 litre automatic energy selection one. So that will then work off gas, mains or 12 volt electric. This one, obviously being a compressor one, is purely 12 volt. But these compressor fridges are more tilt tolerant. They get down to temperature quicker. So I tend to prefer a compressor fridge in a camp fan, but as I say, you have got the choice. Now, if you want more in terms of culinary options than just your three burner hob, you can have an oven. Now, it's a 20 litre oven and grill. It can be mounted up here, probably not the most convenient position, but then you can keep your big fridge. Alternatively, you can go to a smaller fridge, either 85 litres as a compressor model, or 60 litres as a three-way fridge and have your oven mounted here above the fridge. Also, a further option is to have a microwave and that, again, would go in this top locker. So lots of choice, but also lots of great standard features. You've got opening windows all the way around, sliding windows here and here, top, win top hinged window in the rear door. You've got this nice split level worktop. I like the fact that the, the cooker worktop is a little higher than the sink and this extension here. The, the sink actually comes with a proper draining board and I can't remember the last time I saw one of those in a camper van. That is a really nice feature. So much better than fiddling around with some plastic contraption that you stick alongside. Storage, well there's plenty of that too, and also some good features. You've got a waste bin on the inside of this door, and then inside that cupboard is a set of melamine crockery, all firmly clipped into place and all part of the standard spec. Alongside the cupboard there includes a slide out cutlery tray, and again your cutlery is included. And down the bottom of that cupboard, clipped against the wheel arch, You've got a chopping board. So they really do seem to have thought of everything, don't they? In fact, up here, alongside that rear speaker, you've got a set of cups and little beakers as well, little proper glass beakers, not some horrible plastic thing that you won't want to drink out of. More storage up here. These are decent size top lockers for all your sort of non-perishable foods. And there's even more storage at the end of the unit in this top loading hatch. Ideal for cameras or laptop and that sort of thing. Excellent. And I nearly forgot, you've got this max fan in the ceiling that can blow in or suck air out. You've got a kitchen roll holder. You've got plenty of main sockets too here. Plenty of space here for coffee machine, kettle, toaster, whatever. Another one here with a couple of USBs there as well. So, plenty of space to use all your appliances. You'll be super impressed by the amount of storage in the washroom too. You've got these little top lockers, a top loading cupboard here, which, well, that alone is more than adequate for my needs. 
the shelved cupboard under the basin. Yeah, there's loads and loads of room. Corner fixed basin, all feels very sturdy, nothing flimsy in, the, in this washroom at all. In fact, nothing flimsy in this van. The loo itself is the more upmarket, better quality Dometic one, so I'm pleased about that. You've got a soap dispenser on the wall, um, roof vent above, towel or robe hooks behind me, and of course, that hatch into the garage area if you want to hang any stuff in there. They've even thought about the fact that I might have still not quite lost that extra Michelin that I put on at Christmas because the washroom door folds to miss the yeah. extra tyre. You don't have to be slim to get in and out of this washroom. You don't have to be slim to take a shower in here either. Although, of course, there's no separate shower. Hot water comes from the Webasto system and then you have a shower curtain that pulls around. Simply press studs into place above the units there, protects all the furniture. The shower head is your tap, clips onto the wall or you can hand hold it. Plenty of room in here to use the shower without getting stuck. In fact, I didn't even touch the shower curtain, I don't think, when I was showering in here this morning. A single drain in the centre of the shower tray, not perfect for, for letting your wastewater out if you're not on a completely level pitch, but it does a reasonable job. And yeah, it's a, it's a good shower for a small, well, smallish camper van. And so time to show you the beds. Now the first thing to do is release a catch at the forward end of the sofa. Now the settee will slide out and I can just show you that there's plenty of room underneath for two pillows and two single duvets. So all your bedding can be conveniently stowed. Settee base slides right the way across and then there's another one of those over center catches which you can reach through a little, little hole in the end just to lock the settee into position. On this side, you just undo a strap that attaches to the wall and fold the settee down, or fold the settee backrest down. And then these little infill cushions go in down the side. You can use the scatter cushions as pillows if you want. And then the bed on the near side is completed with this fold down panel. And then you just replace that cushion. So you've got a nice aisle to walk through, still got good access to the kitchen, to the washroom, no um, interruption of any of the facilities and bed sizes, 1.94 meters long by 0.69 meters wide over on the near side, and then a super wide bed, slightly shorter, 1.9 meters long here, um, and 0.85 meters, 850 millimeters wide. So a really good size bed on the off side. Cab isn't affected, you don't have to move the seats, they can be left either facing forward or swiveled as you'd have had them for, for lounging and living in the van. So two really good size and very easy to make, very flat, very comfortable single beds. I slept on this one last night, slept really well. There's loads of room, you're not gonna worry. Sometimes when you've got overhanging wardrobes, um, they're a little bit low and you worry about if you've got somebody with big feet, they're gonna bang their, bang their legs and feet on the, on the underside of the wardrobe. That's just not an issue in this van. And not only that, but you have got the option, if you prefer on occasion, to make a double bed, in which case you don't fold down that panel there, you just leave that in situ. And then this extra cushion, which we had over here, well that, first of all, the sofa needs to now slide back and lock into that position. And then this part of the settee base at the end, that just slides out. And now, again, I haven't locked the settee, but it does lock into that position. And now you've got a double bed that's 1.9 meters long. And a, 
it's widest there, 1.55 metres wide. I think that's five foot wide, so a really big double bed. Yes, it narrows at the foot, but you have got a little gangway at the side of the bed and easy access off the foot of the bed with this standing space here to get again to the kitchen or the washroom. So good size, easy bed making. And if you prefer, you can go for the uh, Pimento XL in double bed form, in which case you have a, a double bed, but not the single bed option. So on the road with this Mervy, well, driven hundreds of Fiat Ducatos, and this is the latest Series 8 one with the new 2.2 litre engine, 140 bhp. Actually, it goes along pretty well. This one's only got 850 miles or so on the clock, but it sails along all right. I think a lot of people would be very satisfied with this. Um, and now that the 160 engine is no more, um, I don't think many of us will justify the extra expense to go to the 180. I think two Murphy seem to have done a good job of keeping it really quiet on the road. I think this carpet in the cab helps. The new engines are quieter, but this is certainly the quietest one I've driven yet. It's 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 very quiet on the road, very uneven at 60 mile an hour, it's it's very quiet. Um, there's just the occasional chatter from one of the blinds in the back, but really there's there's next to no conversion noise either. So, well done Mervy on that score. Um, Spec-wise, it's, it's pretty basic. I mean, there's no sat-nav, uh, no cruise control on this one. It has got the cab air conditioning. That's, that's an optional extra. Everything, you know, Mervy's, you, you, you spec what you want. You don't pay for what you don't want. Um, it's the, the first one of these new Series 8 Ducatos I've seen with a plastic steering wheel, which I don't like. It's, it's just not a nice texture compared with a, a leather wheel, which we've got used to on pretty much everything now. But it handles well. Oh, we, yeah, we're used to these Fiat's. They, they do drive pretty well. Um, it's a hard ride. Um, if you like a softer ride, the, the Ford is a better option. Um, the driving position is, is pretty good. Um, I would like the the steering wheel to adjust for rake as well as reach but that's always been a fear issue um, all round visibility is good you've got the reversing camera which goes through the radio screen and the radio this is the basic fiat radio there's there's no touch screen um, it has got dab and it has um, got bluetooth but that's about it so yeah if you want more toys you can pay for them and have them um, but you don't have to pay for what you don't want. So it drives, yeah, like a, like a Fiat, but like a pretty good Fiat. So that's the Mervy Pimento XL SB. And if you haven't already gathered, I rather like it. It's got great single beds, good size, easy to make, lovely and flat and comfy. It's got a great kitchen, a really usable washroom, lots of options to spec it exactly how you want it. And of course, above all else, that wonderful lounge. Now this one, as you see it here, comes out at £68,707. That's with the Maxi Ducato base vehicle, dashboard air conditioning, Expedition grey paint, the rear view camera, big fridge, external barbecue and shower points, and LED light over the sliding door. If it was mine, what would I add? Well, I'd have a leather steering wheel, I'd have the cruise control, they're the only base vehicle things I think I couldn't live without. Um, I'd have the Fiamma awning on the side, and an interesting option is they do do an additional uh, 45 litre fresh water tank under slung. Well, for a bit of uh, off-grid camping, that would just give you longer uh, stays off-grid. So I'd go for that. I'd have the fly screen on the door and I'd have the cab blinds, the Remis cab blinds rather than silver screens. 
if I spec all those features on top of the ones on this vehicle, that would come to £71,575, which is still, well, in days of rising and rising and rising camper van prices, doesn't sound too bad to me. And of course, you don't have to have all those options. You can pick and choose what you want. You can go further with leather trim, big engines, automatic gearbox, all those toys, or you can spec it right down and have it well, with less toys than you've got here. I'd even be tempted with the Ford version over the Fiat. Not least because I prefer driving the Ford, but also the Ford has a four-wheel drive option, so even more increasing your off-grid possibilities. People often ask me in this job, what would you buy? Well, of course, the simple answer to that is I did buy a handbill camper on a VW T6. But if there was only me and my wife Katie, and we wanted something just that little bit bigger, this would definitely be on the shortlist. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Plenty more camper van and motorhome reviews coming up soon. Don't forget to subscribe and of course to like the channel. Any comments, let us know.